Hello, lecture laners. Today, I'll be donning my captain's suit as we explore how a wing produces lift. Hope you enjoy. So there are two main schools of thought when it comes to explaining how an aerofoil produces lift. On one hand, we can look at Bernoulli and Bernoulli's principle. And on the other hand, we have Newton and his third law. So let's start by looking at Bernoulli. Let's say we have an aerofoil inside a box. Well, as air flows over this wing, you can see that it wraps around the wing. Now, if we focus on this specific section of the airfoil, you'll notice that the airflow above and below this point is different. The air that's flowing above the wing is actually getting constricted. And as such, it has to move faster. It's like when you put your thumb over the end of a hose and it sprays out rapidly. The same idea. Whereas on the bottom, it's quite open and allows a very laminar and smooth flow of air. Now, because this air is speeding up over the top of the wing, something's going to happen to the pressure. This is Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle states that as a fluid increases in velocity, its static pressure decreases. Now, air is a fluid, and because it moves faster over the top of the wing than underneath, a lower pressure system appears above the airfoil in reference to the higher underside of the wing. Now, if we think about high pressure air as molecules bouncing around, going in all different types of directions, if we have high pressure air, there's a lot more molecules bouncing around into the bottom of the wing. Whereas in our low pressure above the wing, there's less molecules bouncing off the airfoil. Now this imbalance is what creates the lift force that we know enables our planes to fly. But hang on, it can't be that easy. Because we know that some stunt planes fly upside down. And if that was the case, that means that the high pressure system would be on top and the low pressure system would be on the bottom. Or some planes actually have symmetrical wings where there would be no pressure difference. So how can we explain these two types of wings and how they create lift? Well, that's where Newton comes in. If we think about a balloon filled with air and we let go of the end, because of the internal pressure of the rubber wanting to contract, air is forced out the back. That air that's forced out the back propels the balloon forward. Newton would say that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is Newton's third law. Now, how do we apply this to an aerofoil? Well, imagine sticking your hand out the side of a car window and how you feel the air pushing off the underside of your hand and making your hand want to move upwards. That's one way of thinking about how Newton's third law works with a plane. When air strikes the underside of the wing, that makes the wing want to go up because the air is deflected downwards and for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction pushing the wing up. Another way of thinking about it is that the air, which curves over the wing, sticks to both sides of the aerofoil and is ejected down and out the back. This is the Kawanda effect, when a fluid sticks to the surface of an object. Now, if we pretend like that air is getting forcefully shoved out the back, then there's going to be some reaction that makes the plane or the wing 
want to move in the opposite direction, thus giving lift. So by melding these two ideas, we can explain correctly how an aerofoil generates lift. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe.